Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome once again to another special edition of Atlanta Business Radio. This is digital marketing series that we've been doing, episode number three. Thank you so much for joining us. I am uh, in the co-host seat here today, and I'm Ryan Redhawk McPherson. And alongside me is Thomas Harpointner. How are you, Thomas? Hey, good morning, Ryan. I'm great. Good, good. Nice to have you back in the studio on a Tuesday. Today is October 11th. And uh, again, this is episode number three of Digital Marketing Series. We bring into our audience from time to time to really enlighten them and educate them and inform them on the importance of implementing digital marketing to your business. So, Thomas, why don't you kick us off a little bit? Tell us uh, what's new with you and, and AIS Media. Well, we're, uh, you know, we're, the holidays are in full effect. I mean, you know, the, uh, all the shopping catalogs have gone out, you know, starting 30 days ago, but the holiday shopping season is, you know, has fully kicked off now. So, um, everyone's getting the emails. We're getting the social media posts, right? It's time to do the holiday shopping. So, That's as right. soon as we get past, uh, you know, uh, October here and, and Halloween, I think we're going to start seeing the Christmas stuff. So very, very busy. Very good to hear. Yeah. So, and you brought a, a long, uh, one guest in the studio and we have another caller on the line here today. Who'd you bring with you? Yeah, very, very exciting today. In fact, uh, one of the most exciting guests, I think for anyone who's, you know, who, who loves motor sports and, uh, uh, Petit Le Mans series, uh, you know, I have with me here today, Spencer Pompelli. He's a defending ST champion, recently crowned uh, at uh, Road Atlanta just a few weeks ago. And um, on the phone, Eric Birch, president, owner of P1 Group. Um, and, well, you know, I'll let Spencer talk a little bit about, um, you know, what he's been doing, what he's been up to. And of course, Eric, he's going to enlighten us how digital and social media marketing has reshaped the business of uh, motorsports. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's start with you, Spencer. Tell us a little bit about... Uh, a little bit about your background. What, when did you get into racing? I uh, got into racing pretty early on. My dad was a driver in the IMSA series that I currently race in now. So as a kid, uh, especially young, impressionable, you know, 12, 13-year-old, I would go to the racetrack and see all the cool cars and all the glamour that surrounded uh, car racing. Little did I know what I'd actually mm -hmm. be getting into. But um, I just uh, really got a love for it early on, and it was always something I wanted to do. Now, in racing, much like uh, music, the music business, I compare myself to a musician a lot. There's a lot of people out there that are very capable and uh, are very uh, determined to be successful, but only very few can. And I uh, just got very lucky to find my way into the right uh, race tracks at the right mm -hmm. time when the right driver decided he wanted to quit and, mm -hmm. you know, all that things. And uh, over the years, I've been fortunate enough to race in uh, sports car racing full time. I think this is my 19th season of racing. Wow. I just concluded. Yeah, I know you didn't think I was that old, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we uh, this year, I raced uh, three different cars in three different racing series, two of which are typically on the same weekend at the same racetrack. So I literally run back and forth between two different teams driving two completely different cars. One was a Porsche Cayman, it had nice. all of uh, 200 horsepower. Mm -hmm. I compare that to racing in slow motion. <laughs> and then I'll run to the other side of the uh, paddock, jump in the uh, change racing Lamborghini. Wow. And that's a Lamborghini GTD car. And that car has uh, you know close to 600 horsepower, a ton of downforce, mm -hmm. which means it has a massive amount of, of grip. And I compare that to racing and fast forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've also been fortunate enough this year to drive for Acura. I drove Acura TLX in a completely different series uh, for three races this year. And I'm uh, finishing one of my most successful seasons and, uh, you know, still really enjoying what I do. Wow. 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 So, so you're bouncing around quite a bit. Yeah, it's a lot of travel. Yeah. And uh, when I race the Acura, it's the only thing I do all weekend. So we'll do maybe two practice sessions a day. Then we have a qualifying session mm -hmm. and then a race. So my four-day weekend will... Yeah maybe be in the race car for, you know, a couple hours and there's a lot of downtime. But when I'm on the other side, I'm constantly trying to, you know, figure out where I need to be next. So the weekends go from pretty relaxing when I'm outside of the race car to extremely busy, uh, you know, mm -hmm. first, first guy there in the morning, yeah, last right. guy to leave at night. And, uh, and on top of that, you know, you're, you're working in the race car. It's very physical, especially you, on a hot day. Now, after 19 seasons, what's unique about you is you've seen a lot of things evolve in you know, motorsports, right? So for a lot of the young guys that are just stepping into it now that, you know, it's just business as usual, but what are some of the things on a personal level, you know, you know, how you're using technology, digital social media to reach out to your fans, to get sponsorships? How has that changed? I mean, it's, a, it's changed completely. When I first did uh, Daytona in 1998, it was my first professional race. 
I, mean, I don't even know if we had the internet back then. <laughs> you know, I don't, certainly yeah. weren't any smartphones, certainly yeah. wasn't anything like social media now. Uh, nowadays, it's extremely important to, uh, as a driver, to be available to fans. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that sponsors and team owners look at. You know, your digital footprint is an important sell to them mm -hmm. as well as just your talents behind the wheel and the other things you do outside the race car. So that's uh, that's probably one of the biggest changes we've seen in racing. It's technology in the race car, but it's also technology outside the race car that we use as tools to kind of forward our business agendas. Yeah, although you're on the radio here today, a traditional medium, you're still tweeting to your fans, right? Yeah, yep. notice that phone get, got pulled right out. So yeah. yeah, you know, I've learned from some of the best in racing. You know, there, there's, uh, I find guys out there that will actually get jobs over equally qualified drivers mm. just because they're uh, much better on social media, you know, yeah, and they right. engage more. And that's what a lot of things that the, the teams and the fans and the people that actually pick drivers are looking for. Interesting, yeah. All right. And let's bring Eric into the conversation here. So let's get your perspective on where things are today and also share a little bit about your background and how you got involved with racing. Absolutely. Well, uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. Um, I uh, couldn't be much more proud of uh, how Spencer did this year and and the championship uh, played a small role in that. And as uh, uh, my company was brought in by the race team that he drives for to not only bring his co-driver, but also bring the sponsor on board, which as uh, everybody knows, the uh, you know, racing is, uh, you know, it doesn't go anywhere without the, uh, without the money behind it. And that's where the sponsors come in and, and they have to have the value back to justify the expense. And, uh, my personal background in the sport, I've been in the sport for 18 years. I started out, uh, managing teams at the professional level. So I got to learn very early on the importance of the um, of the sponsors and not only the drivers. Um, you know, they are both. Um, this is a team effort, and uh, everything from the guys that changes change the wheels and the, and the tires to the guys that are behind the wheel and uh, you know get all the glory. The lifeblood of the sport now is the. Uh, fan engagement and uh, and the sponsors that uh, that are looking to get in front of those uh, fans and get the brand impressions and that's changed um, back in the uh, 80s and 90s and early 2000s uh, t entities like NASCAR they were just selling sponsorship and that is essentially the logo on the car and that's changed uh, dramatically once the economic downturn happened in 07 and 08. Um, I started my company in 2006, so next month is actually my 10-year anniversary with P1 Group. And uh, I started in large part because I saw drivers like Spencer and other, and other guys that had a lot of talent uh, that were standing on the sidelines and, and not being um, utilized properly. And also to better engage the sponsor to the team and the fan. And that's gone very well for us. And uh, several years ago, I actually even uh, retained AIS Media and had them uh, revamp some of our own digital marketing because we needed to get in front of more sponsors. We needed to get in front of more drivers. And Tom's company was able to uh, help us with that, gave us a brand new, beautiful website and did a lot of for us. And, and um, so I understand exactly what it is his company brings to the table for uh, for those entities and um, i'd say that we had a very successful run with uh, as media and i certainly recommend them highly um but once the economic downturn took place companies stopped spending money uh, certainly unnecessarily or without justification and what happened and what we saw was companies started saying you know what how are you going to show us the return on the investment that we're making? And the race teams threw their arms up and said, we have no idea. And that was a huge problem. And these companies now are coming in saying, we want you to show us what the return on investment will be. And what that's since done is made the logos on the car and on the driver's suits and all those things value added. So what they're actually selling is the fan engagement. So what you're seeing is race teams in the past, they may not even had a website. Now they have these very intricate websites that have 
um, the boom cameras over the, doing the pit stops, and the fans can actually log right onto their website and see the pit stops live. You know, the fans want to mm-hmm. be engaged, mm-hmm. and the sponsors' logos are now strategically placed everywhere uh, within the within that team, whether it's a dashboard logo, a logo on their driver's race suit, on their helmet, on their visor strip, on all the pit lane equipment. And you're seeing the drivers like Spencer now walking around the paddock using Periscope and, and Snapchat and all these other and, and Facebook Live and, and really engaging the fans because the fans want to be immersed in whatever their favorite sport or their favorite driver is. And they want full access and they want it live. They want it now. And it's really changed the sport. So instead of somebody like Spencer just being able to focus on going in early in the morning and focusing on what, you know, I got to turn here, got to turn there, I got this apex, he's got to walk in the door thinking, okay, I got to engage the fan today. I got to make sure that my sponsor's logo is in that fan's face as much as humanly possible. So now the sponsors are able to go in there and use various different metrics to gauge how much access they're getting. And it's completely changed the sport. Well, you know, I remember when we were down at the uh, Rolex uh, 24 a few years ago, you know, one of the most exciting parts of the the race that that everyone really enjoyed were the dash cams, you know. Um, And in the early days when the camera was placed in the car and you can actually see the action from inside the car. Um, you know, that's what got everyone's attention. Now, Spencer can't be driving around at 200 miles an hour with a Snapchat camera. No, no, no Facebook <laughs> that, Live. You know, that, they yeah, discourage that's, it. That's, yeah. yeah, that's not going to work. But um, I think that was kind of an early sign, you know, for the kind of engagement that fans really wanted. They wanted to be in the driver's seat. Um, and it creates this level of authenticity and, re- and, and reality. You know, um, you know, their circuits had a difficult time filling the seats because now, you know, people have, you know, 50, 60 inch TVs and they've got their iPads and their smartphones uh, so they can, you know, connect with the drivers that way. Um, I mean, what were some of the biggest hurdles that, you know, you had to overcome? Um, was there pushback? I mean, where did pushback come from? Did it come from the drivers? Did it come from the teams? Did it come from the circuit? Where, where was the big challenge? Because every, every business gets pushback, right, in, in, in adopting new technologies. Where did you see it, Eric? Uh, really, the, the drivers... Uh, especially the young drivers who we specialized in working, our, our, our biggest focus uh, for my company was the young guys that are coming up through the sport and uh, the younger generation. We didn't have a lot of the uh, the older generation drivers. So they, they engaged it quite actively and aggressively and enthusiastically. The, uh, the teams were probably the biggest mm. because most of the race teams that are out there and have been out there for so long, especially the ones with a lot of history behind them are guys that early on knew how to make race cars go fast. And that's what they did. Well, the business of, of motor racing is where they lack. And in the eighties, nineties and two thousands, the sponsors were coming out of the woodwork and handing them ridiculous amounts of money just to go throw a logo on their car and go racing. So they didn't really have to work for it. So it was really training the race team to embrace this and actually want to give the sponsor back Mm. uh, the value. And it's so much more than just simply a logo on a race car now. Um, You know, it's hospitality. It's um, fan engagement. It's product sampling track side. It's it's all these various different tentacles that, you know, make it viable for a company like mine to go in and, and... and do that for them. But um, I think for us, that's, that was kind of the, uh, the area that we had to kind of reinvent ourselves after you know, we came to AIS Media and, and we saw the light uh, through, uh, honestly, through Thomas's eyes. And he said, hey, you know, this is, these are some of the things that you should be doing. And we really uh, had to take a long look at it and we embraced it. And, and it changed our business focus. And we were able to then spin that back to our clients. And uh, and have them embrace it, but in many cases, luckily for us, they embrace it through us. Now, a lot more moving parts today than there once were, obviously. Um, now, Spencer, is there? I mean, you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, right? Um, do you use Snapchat? I've not ventured into Snapchat yet. Um, at age 41, I, I think maybe I just don't get it. 
I'm, I'm trying, but I'm very active on Twitter. I think I've been on Twitter now for over 10 years. You know, I was one of the first okay. guys to jump on there. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And uh, I've got a website that I constantly update. You'd mm. be surprised at the number of drivers who, if you go on their website, you won't find any updates for the last three years. And I've I, noticed that. Yeah. I don't want to be one of those guys ever. I want everything to kind of synergize. I want the Twitter to mm-hmm. support the website, to support the Instagram and Facebook, and then come back to uh, some of the PR stuff that I do. Uh, after each race and have uh, have that emailed out to my email list and it all comes back together. You can sign up for the email list right. at spencerpompelli.com if you want to get updates. And if you follow at Spencer Pompelli, you'll get all the Instagram photos and mm-hmm. it, it all links together. But, uh, you know, I, I think one of the most difficult parts for me as a driver is to try to find a good balance between the interests that I'm kind of uh, working for. The team owners, some of the sponsors don't necessarily want a lot of controversy. They want pretty straightforward uh, opinionless mm. uh, information spat back out. But a lot of the fans really want the opposite. They right. want to be engaged. They want a little controversy. They want your opinions when it might not be popular. And so I find that if you just spit out the uh, the company line to the fans, they're just, they don't get the same engagement. So you really have to walk a fine line between telling the truth. Sometimes when the truth isn't good, sometimes you have a bad race. Yeah. Sometimes your car broke, you know, sometimes yeah. the manufacturer, that car that's supporting you, they don't want it. The world fans want the drama. Yeah. They don't (laughs) want the world to know that their car broke, you know, and, uh, but the fans want to know why after, you know, two hours did the car come in the garage? So, uh, it's, it's very difficult to walk that fine line. I think the more you do it, the better you get at it. And I think you have to divide it between, you know, just a little bit of personal and opinion, but really uh, reinforce the message. And I think if you do that, the fans will enjoy the interaction, but they still appreciate the fact that you are you know, part of the team and trying to help promote the team's message too. So uh, that's one thing I just, you know, when I wanted to be a race car driver at age five, I didn't think yeah. I'd ever be dealing with. Yeah. I mean, I think you touched on a um, really important topic just now, you, you know, everything that you just explained can really be summarized in con in, in the term of content, mm-hmm. right? Pictures, the videos, the, the, the engagement and at AIS media, we of course get a lot of companies uh, coming to us who want to be found you know, online, they want better visibility, the the mystery of how do I get to the top of search engines? How do I get to the top of Google? And uh, one of those keys is, of course, quality content, right? I mean, Google can only index what you have. It can't index what you don't have. Um, and social media um, and content plays a big role in that, whether it's a it's an article on your website, whether it's a video, whether it's a picture, um, you know, all of that creates quality content and fresh it's fresh, you know, so uh, it creates that level of authenticity and a content that can be repurposed across all these different types of channels. So um, kind of like vehicles today, there are a lot more moving parts than there once were. We can't change our own oil anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if manufacturers have made it a little difficult. So so is digital and social media marketing these days. Um, yeah, my question would be then what's next? Yeah. What can we start doing today is there as a small business or as mm-hmm. a race team? to kind of see what's around the corner 2017 and beyond. Right. So what do you think, Thomas? Well, you know, this this time of year is, it, it's interesting. We always do the, um, the the forward view, you know, the top digital marketing trends for next year. You know, what what's hot? What's new? You know, people are asking, well, what about Snapchat? Should I be on it? You know, what about Instagram? Uh, where is this all going? And, uh, you know, I mean, I can I can tell you at, at the end of the day, they're you have unique cha- uh, channels for unique audiences. You know, take take Pinterest. Now, Spencer, are you on Pinterest? No, I'm not so much right now. He's, he's not going to be on Pinterest. Um, and probably for good reason. About 80% of Pinterest users are women. And uh, most of the content that that, that, that that audience loves are recipes and, you know, fashion and so forth. It's not the appropriate channel. Uh, you know, take Snapchat. The majority of the audience are, you know, up, you know 13 to 25 year olds. Not necessarily a bad place to be because that's where your future fans are. But, you know, maybe going into 2017 might be something to consider, you know, a little uh, a live feed from time to time. We've seen Instagram now offer, you know, live feeds, you know, daily updates and so forth. Um, And also notifications. Um, I mean, this is pretty new, you know, with the new operating systems on all the smartphones, we found that um, uh, one channel that's extremely effective are notifications, meaning, you know, when you get this notification on your phone telling you, um, you know, hey, you know, your app needs to be updated. But now notifications also come from, you know, apps like CNN, you know, breaking news. Um, so for companies who have apps or they have, you know, really uh, timely content, I, I think we're going to see a lot more engagement from notifications going into next year because uh, 99.9% of, if you think about it, 99.9% of texts 
get read, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. now, you can't say that about email and, and a lot of, uh, you know, social media content, right? We, you'd be lucky if five to 10% of your content gets seen, yeah. but everyone checks your, we all check our text messages. Right. We may not reply, right. but we do check <laughs> right. them. You're right. Yeah. Uh, and Spencer, from your perspective, as you walk around the pit area and you're gauging the fans on a regular basis, what are the fans asking for more of? And they want to connect more with the drivers. What can we do to, to connect them? That's a good question. You know, you mentioned the Snapchat thing. It's a good, very good point. You know, I got to think about these fans, you know, that are coming up now and that everything's going to be mm -hmm. different for them. But, uh, you know, I think that anytime you can engage them and get more behind the scenes, it's better. You know, that Periscope has been fantastic because I remember the most recent one I did, I was walking just from our trailer to the grid and it happened to be the path I needed to take took me by some really, really cool equipment. Yeah. And so I uh, just, you know, go peek into the driver's life and just to, as something mm -hmm. as mundane as walking from your trailer to, you know, where you get up in the race car was fantastic. Well, you take it for granted. Right? You, you know, you do. Yeah. yeah. And it, I, I kind of do this day in and day out. So you, it turns into a, a job. And I still have a passion for it. I love it. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll never get to the point where I'm not really just in awe of what I get to do. But you know, there are times when you don't think that this is the highlight. You know, you're not racing to the checker wheel to wheel. It's just a simple walk. But the fans really uh, like anything that can kind of get them, you know, more intimate, more personal. And that's really right. what they crave. Well, I think you know, drivers should wear body cameras when walking around the uh, the, the pit area, the idea. paddock, you know, so yeah. then, and then fans could tune in at any time on their mobile device to see where their favorite driver is. What are they doing? They're currently in an autograph session or maybe they're in a driver briefing, something like that. I think we're changing uh, out of their driver suit or yeah, something. Right. Well, yeah. we can turn it off sometimes, but, uh, <laughs> um, but from you, Eric, has, what can sponsors expect on the horizon as far as more interactive digital marketing um, going forward in next year? Well, again, they're always looking for different ways to engage the fan and getting their brand impression in front of them. Um, a lot of what's happening now is, is tied to the hospitality, inviting guests to the tracks and things like that. So uh, it could be anything to in, you know, make the people that are actually already there part of the team, you know, and, and doing some things that can engage the guests that are there because I think that's something that really hasn't been tapped into. Uh, the other thing that you're seeing more of, and it's just starting, is the Facebook Live and drivers walking around the paddocks and, mm -hmm. and some of the celebrities and, and, and TV personalities are starting to do it where you see them walking around. They're actually on the way into the track at 6 o'clock in the morning or on their way out of the track at 6 o'clock at night. And that's one of the other things that people don't realize is that you know these guys, uh, it looks like they get all the glory. They're racing for two hours, but they're actually there for 12, um, in many cases 18 or 24. But uh, you know, being able to... Uh, do things that are maybe a little bit more out of the box. And I think um, as the fan gets more immersed in this, uh, we're going to have to be a lot more creative because there's, they really do want that now. Uh, they want to be in the action. So like what you were saying with the body cams, that's actually not a bad idea. Um, some of the drivers may not want that uh, at certain points in the time, but, um, yeah, but think about... Um, what's going to happen when you know the fans for a NASCAR race, many of them tune in to see the crashes. Well, that's, a, that's an aspect that you don't really see much of. You may have an in-car camera that shows what happens to that sponsor's logo on the dashboard when the crash happens, but you're not seeing what actually happens to the driver. And you never know that it, it could actually help on a safety uh, perspective where you see the NFL and, and some of the other sports that are dealing with concussions and all, concussion protocols and whatnot, it happens to drivers too. You think about some of these impacts at three and four and five G's, that's three and four or five times your body mass. That's, that's uh, working against your brain and, and, and these impacts. And um, so it could be utilized in a lot of different a a ways to not just benefit the sponsors, but benefit the driver. And from a safety standpoint, that uh, makes sense for sure. And I'm sure uh, the driving world will soon implement augmented reality and virtual reality for all their fans and such as well. Maybe fans outside the gates can be what feel what it's like to be in the paddock area through some augmented reality. So I'm sure technology and advertising, because there's a lot, let's face it, there's a lot of sponsorship money in racing and sponsors are not afraid to spend money. Um, and I think racing is unique in that sense that it's one of the only sports where uh, drivers, the more patches you have on your uniform, uh, probably the more successful you are. And, 
and the sponsorship and the advertising as well. So, um, and as as we begin to close this uh, this digital marketing series uh, episode here today, we want to make sure our listeners can uh, find out more information about your services or uh, where they may find you um, at some other events. So, Eric, uh, any events coming up for you or other races on your calendar? Uh, for this year, it's uh, mostly going to be getting ready for next year. This is what they, we're in the middle of what they call silly season. And I'm sure Spencer can attest to that. It, it really is silly season. Um, there's a lot of testing that's going on in place. Uh, a lot of teams are changing cars. A lot of teams or drivers are changing teams. And uh, so there's a lot of that. And we kind of uh, have to keep our uh, finger on the pulse of what's going on in the sport. So for more or less uh, the balance of 2016 is going to be getting everything ready in a line for 2017 but they can certainly find us at uh, p1group.com and that's the letter p number one and then g-r-o-u-p-e.com and we are on facebook and twitter and everywhere in between and we'll have those links posted up on our website in about 24 hours from now on atlantabusinessradio.com so you can find it there so this is the time you're out meeting with sponsors cultivating new relationships but also looking back upon the year and all your successful well, what was some of the highlights of the past year uh for you and your company uh, honestly, one of the biggest highlights for us was uh, being able to put that package together that allowed Spencer to go run for the championship this year. Nice. Mm. You know, we take a lot of uh, pride in when our clients are successful, just like I'm sure Tom does with his. You know, when when his clients uh, get awards for for their for their efforts, um, you know, being able to see our drivers uh, and we had several of them up on the podium this year and winning championships and winning races and spraying the champagne and for us. Our victories are when they achieve success. That's what it's all about, right? At the end of the day. Yeah. Certainly. And Spencer, it was the winner of the 2016 Petit Le Mans RS1 Porsche Cayman. That's right. That's the car you drove to victory uh, in that. And when did that take place? That was two weeks ago. That was at uh, Road Atlanta here, not far away, as a home race for me. I actually won the race on Friday, which was not the Petit Le Mans, but that was a support series. Okay. And that was also the one that clinched the championship. And then on Saturday in the main race, I drove the Change Racing Lamborghini. And unfortunately, we had some mechanical issues in that car, but mm -hmm. uh, was not able to defend my win from last year. But now, uh, as of yesterday, I'm officially unemployed, uh, as are everybody in the, You're available. In the racing <laughs> world. Yeah, our contracts usually <laughs> last for a year. And so uh, now the off season will be uh, filled with just trying to sort out next season and get everything set and in place. And, and from your perspective, as a, you know, I guess you're a small business owner and yourself, you are a media property, you are a race car driver, you are a talent that people want. So are you going to be marketing yourself? Are you going into meetings? What are you doing on a personal level to kind of put yourself in a position where you want to be for next year's race season? That's what it is. It's meeting with people and kind of just talking uh, to everyone in the paddock. You know, no one really knocks on your door and says, hey, you want to be a race car driver? You've got to try to find the channels that will lead to uh, mm -hmm. getting yourself back in the racing seat. So uh, I had an awesome season this year with uh, Rensport One. That was a deal that Eric put together. He said he was a small part of that championship. I want to argue he was a large part of that championship. <laughs> and uh, the Change Racing Lamborghini guys just did a fantastic job this year in their first season in the series of racing. So if they'll have me back, I'd be there in a heartbeat. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll put that all together and We'll uh, get to uh, next season and start planning and testing and all the things we have to do to get ready. Well, make sure our listeners can find you on social media or your website. So please share. Yeah, it's Spencer Pumpelly, which is P-U-M-P-E-L-L-Y dot com. Uh, if you search me on Google, it'll come up. And then uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Spencer Pumpelly. Yep. And uh, that's probably the best way to find me. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and I uh, love sharing uh, you know, what I do with everyone. And then you can find them next year out Road Atlanta, driving some sort of fast machine around the racetrack. Mm -hmm. So we certainly wish you much success going forward. And uh, please do come back and uh, bring a sponsor with you. Yeah, and, and, and they can share kind of how that relationship works even deeper and and and, uh, and get some uh, some uh, kind of fan following through those channels as yeah, well. So we'll, we'll do. Awesome. And for Thomas, for you, uh, any other uh, news, places you're going to be? I know you'll be back in here in a couple of weeks for another episode. But between now and then, what's what's happening with you? Yeah, we're doing it every uh, the second Tuesday of every month, you know, mm -hmm. through the rest of the year. So um, it's uh, yeah, this this has been exciting for for all of us. Um, uh, this is the the absolute busiest time of the year, yeah. you know, at AIS Media. So um, you know, with the holidays coming up, so we've got about you know six eight productive weeks left in the year. Um, so. so there you have it, folks. Uh, Thomas suggests you go get your shopping done now if you haven't already, for sure. And your website and uh, Twitter handle or anything like that? Yeah, our website is, of course, AISmedia.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Harpointner. Um, 
Same on Facebook, Thomas Harpointner. So feel free to engage. All right. And make sure you check us out uh, here. You can follow the network, Business Radio X, on Twitter at Business Radio X. And today's program, Atlanta Business Radio, is also on Twitter, Atlanta B I Z Radio. And go to AtlantaBusinessRadio.com to find this interview and all of our past guests as well. Thank you so much for listening today. If your company is out there doing something interesting to generally serve your market, reach out to us directly on the website and pitch us your story at atlantabusinessradio.com. Thank you to Stone Payton and Lee Cantor. And on behalf of the entire Business Radio X network, we'll see you next time on Atlanta Business Radio.